Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to the first ever outside review. It's a beautiful day outside. I figure, why not do the review outside on the front porch? You know, um, yeah, payback. I watched payback last night. Good pay-per-view for the most part. I was pleasantly pleased. Now, there was a lot of shit on here, some filler, but for the most part, I enjoyed the show. I thought it was pretty quality. You know, you had some good mid-card matches, a good main event, some shit. <laughs> we'll get to that. I'll start off with the pre-show. It was El Torito defeating Hornswoggle in a mask um, versus hair match. Hornswoggle tries to rip off the mask of uh, El Torito, you know, and there's another mask underneath. We've seen this plenty of times before, nothing new here, but there was some funny parts to it, and I guess it was all right. You have one part where everybody's like doing a flying move to the outside. I thought it was pretty funny, um, you know, not not too bad, I guess. You know, for a comedy match, it was pretty tolerable. It made me laugh in some parts, so, uh, you know, you could say it's PG bullshit, but, uh, you know, that was tolerable PG bullshit, to say the very least, you know. Just, uh, I don't think they should continue on with this feud. I mean, enough is enough already. I mean, how many times are they going to, like, you know, have these two guys wrestle one another? Now Hornswoggle is bald, you know. I've never found it funny, you know. We're all supposed to laugh at this when people are bald, but it's not really that funny. Um, then you had in the first match on the main pay-per-view with Sheamus defeating Cesaro. Um, I prefer the small package over the bro kick. <laughs> I, I actually do. That move is so fucking annoying. I'd rather he beat people from now on with a small package than a bro kick. I mean, you know, the, the match itself was good. Cesaro was doing a variety of moves. There were counters. Good match, I give it three stars, you know. I said it in my predictions vid, you know, Cesar winning the U.S. title. He doesn't really need this. He should be wrestling for the motherfucking world title, people. You know, enough with this mid-card, upper mid-card nonsense. He's ready for the big time. Put him against Brian in the main event, and I will tell you that will probably be one of the best matches we see all year. Then it was Curtis Axel and Ryback, Axel defeating the Rhodes Brothers. You know, um, this was pretty good. You know, I was going to say for, you know, for for a filler match, not, you know, above average, not very good, but okay, you know. Um, you know, some people are complaining about the filler on this show, but if it's quality filler, then it really doesn't matter. You know, it's not bad. If it's not a bad match, I'm not going to complain about it. Oh, it was unadvertised. Who gives a shit? A good match is a good match. And this was a decent match, to say the least. Um, after the match, he got Cody Rhodes. And, um, and he tells Goldust that he deserves a better partner. I don't understand why they don't just, you know, break up and start feuding at SummerSlam, you know, and have a match. Just fucking get the match out of the way. People want to see it. Goldust has talked about being interested in doing the match. Just fucking do it already. What the fuck is the hold up here? I give this two and a half stars. Not too bad. Then it was uh, Rusev defeating uh, Big E. Um, very short match. I didn't understand why it had to be this fucking short. Uh, you know, it was actually going like okay, but only three minutes of action. That's all we get. You know, um, high impact on the spear to the outside, but, you know, why, um, you know, they put so much time, invested so much time and money into Big E and just to have him job out like this. Now, he does, don't get me wrong, he does deserve to be a jobber, but, you know, after they put this much time into him, to just have him job out like this is nonsensical. They give it a quarter of a star, not much there really to, to you know, talk about. Um, you know, not much to rate. Um, then you got Bo Dallas and Kofi Kingston. They're about to have a match, and then Kane comes out and attacks Kofi. Now, this I didn't like. What the fuck was the point? It doesn't Kane have a problem with Daniel Bryan. Kofi Kingston's a fucking jobber. 
What you know? What what is he gonna feud with Kofi now? I have no interest in this. Just fucking retire already. Kane needs to retire pronto. If he's gonna start feuding with Kofi Kingston, then I am completely losing interest in this. You know, good match, the Extreme Rules, but that was because Brian was in it. Kofi Kingston. Holy fucking shit! I am sick to fucking death to Kofi Kingston. There has never been a more worthless human being on the roster than Kofi Kingston. For God fucking sakes, I was happy when Kofi Kingston wasn't wrestling. He was just on the panel. You know, he was on the panel, I think, on the pre-show. I didn't watch the whole pre-show, but I think he was on the panel. Just keep him on the panel. Keep him out of the fucking ring. He fucking sucks. Doing the same fucking moves. Um, you know, that, I don't really see the point. They're trying to build up Bull Dallas. They might as well just have had a, a quick squash match here. What was the point? I, I don't get it. Um, then you had Wade Barrett, uh, Bad News Barrett, defeating RVD. Okay match. Not too bad. Um, you know, decent decent enough. You know, they, they kept it going fast-paced and everything. Um, you know... Match was all right. No real complaints there. Um, Barrett holding on to the title was a good idea. You know, RVD's got nowhere left to go. Uh, you know, on the topic of RVD slowing down, yes, but sometimes he seems more motivated and moves a bit quicker than other times. In this match, he was moving a bit quicker than, say, on the last of all. Uh, you know, I guess it depends. He's <laughs> When he decides to move his old bones... You know, sometimes he'll move it, sometimes he won't. But, but, no, decent match. Two and three quarter stars. I enjoyed it, I suppose. Um, then you had Daniel Bryan holding on to the title. Yes. Well, we all knew he was going to hold on to the title, so no real surprise there. You had Brie Bella slapping Stephanie McMahon and quitting. Uh, pretty good. We haven't seen a good slap in a long time. Last time was like Stephanie... Um, slapping the big show, but it's much better when, you know, Stephanie is getting slapped. Pretty good, dramatic little segment here. I enjoyed it and, and reminded me of better times in the WWE. Then you had Cena defeating Bray Wyatt in the last man standing match. And, you know, motherfuckers, you can complain all day and all night about, you know, Cena winning this match. But, you know, seriously, at the end of the day, you know that he was going to fucking win it. So you might as well enjoy it for what it was. And it was a pretty good match. Table spots, Bray Wyatt crossbody through the barricade. Pretty enjoyable show. For To, to say the very least, I was entertained. Um, seeing the winning, you know, that emphatic winning, you know, pushing... Um, you know, a, a crate on top of Bray Wyatt. You know, after he put him through like a like a um, a fucking little like cheap cardboard platform. That was okay. I guess an okay finish. You know, but seriously, <coughs> would it have been so bad to have seen him just lose? You know, even if it was just the Wyatts beating him down. At least you could say, oh, the Wyatts beat him down. I mean, anything. You know. <laughs> Cena has to win at the end. What what is this? All, all the time. Same thing. But you know, I I enjoyed it. I liked it. It was pretty hardcore. I liked when Cena threw the steps at Bray Wyatt from, you know, out of the ring to the, you know, uh, on the outside. Pr pretty good. Really good, you know, enjoyable spots here. Um I give it I'll say three and a half stars. Not bad. Um, you know, not a fantastic match, but for the most part, I thought it was pretty good. I'm torn between three and a half, three and three quarter stars. The three and a half stars for Cena winning, I suppose. You know, uh, because it is getting a bit ridiculous. It's time for Cena to start putting people over. Almost ten years at the top. You know, come on, <laughs> time to put some new people over. Enough with this shit already. With you winning. All the fucking time. Ridiculous. Then you had Paige defeating Alicia Fox. It's a pretty shitty match. You know, not, nothing really going on here. There, no real action. Just, you know, 
that there wasn't really a lot of substance to this match at all. It was, um, uh, you know, I give it a quarter of a star, bordering on the dud, you know, really not much at all really to talk about here. After the match, Alicia Fox, you know, runs to the back in a very weird way. It was a little bit funny, but, you know, I don't really know where they're going with this. She's just going to be, you know, crazy and loses matches, I guess. Um, instead of, you know, crazy and winning matches, crazy and losing matches. Then in the main event, you had The Shield defeating Evolution, another awesome match. To me, this was about just as good as the Extreme Rules match. People are debating which match is better. You know, the um, <laughs> Seth Rollins does the John Morrison off the Tron. Um, you know, a lot of spots on chairs. You know, a lot of, like, headshots. You had the, um, the dirty deeds on the chair. You had a, a pedigree on the chair. You had a lot of fucking shit. A lot of, um, you know, good hardcore wrestling here. Um, you know, triple power bomb through the table. Just a big brawl. I like how they booked it that the shield just, you know, obliterated evolution at the end. You know, if uh, Batista is going to leave the company, that is the best way to go. You know, it would have been different if he was going to stay one more month and evolution could have won here and then the shield could have won and say money in the bank. But anyway, what I want to talk about is, you know, good match and everything, but, but Blue Batista. Blue tease the motherfuckers. Can this man, for, for for one time, one time only, treat us to a special night, give us a treat, not look like a motherfucking goofball one time. I mean, he comes out. These gigantic armbands like Jeff Hardy length, blue tights, you know, blue boots. He looked like a motherfucking blueberry, for God fucking sakes. He looked like he spilled blueberry juice all over him before the match. You know, you want to get your antioxidants in before the match. I understand that. But, you know, holy fucking shit. That outfit. It was distracting. I, I, I mean, you know, when I was looking at the triple powerbomb through the table, I barely noticed the powerbomb. I was looking at the tights and the armbands. Who the fuck dresses this guy? If he dresses himself, I suggest that he call up his mother and tell her to, to, to lay his tights out on the bed. What what happened to this guy? You know, you know, you're not really supposed to know uh, notice guys' outfits, but he just he's a fucking hipster doofus, he's trying to be different, original nose ring, skinny jeans, ridiculous outfits. Ever since he returned, I I, I don't understand it. He's, he's looking like a fucking idiot, like a fucking mama I, You know, the, the way how this guy dresses is completely ridiculous. Lutista indeed, motherfuckers. Anyway, this pay-per-view was pretty decent. I enjoyed it for the most part. It had some filler shit on it. Um, not everything was fantastic, but a good main event. Even the Cena match was decent. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. 7.5 out of 10. Not not fantastic or anything, but you can't argue with a good main event. You know, if Cena does a good match, you know, he deserves to be praised for it, I suppose. Even though it would have been so much better if he would have fucking lost. For God fucking sake. <sighs> ah. Yeah, I don't know. For me, um, you know, uh, Blue Tista overshadowed everything. Uh, but yeah, you know, good opener and all that. Yeah, so, you know, decent enough show. Decent enough show, you know. Um, only $10 a month to, to see it. So, you know, you really can't complain that much that you're getting robbed anymore. Um, as far as I can see, the pay-per-views since they've been on the network have been better. They've been better since they were pay-per-view exclusive. Well, excuse me, they're not really pay-per-views anymore. Special events, guys. So it wasn't completely retarded. It didn't really feel special. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, Blutista looked special tonight, though. He was the only one that was looking pretty fucking retarded. <laughs> All right, motherfuckers. Uh, decent enough pay-per-view. All right.